guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale, and we are joined by Colton. Colton, what's up, man? You're already in a match, so we're getting right started. How you doing, dude? <laughs> I'm doing good. Uh, just working on this three must deck that's pretty popular right now. Dude, is it just me or do the new... Uh, not only... I hate to be critical. I hate to be negative at the start of our video. We try to keep things positive here, Colton, but... Is it just me, or did the Black Friday deals and the emotes all kind of suck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was... I, I like try to stay up and watch uh, catch a few of them, but yeah, none of them were really like appealing for me. I yeah. only bought one with emotes, the baby dragon one. I did. Oh, I did the opposite one. Uh, yeah, no, I did the same one. I think the other. I one didn't. Was like, well, I, I didn't yeah. say I didn't really like all the emotes in it. I just liked the baby dragon. Yeah, I think that the probably the baby dragon. I mean, the inferno tower is the lamest. But anyway, we're not here to talk about emotes. <laughs> My apologies. Did you just? Were you just using it that while was me, spectating? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, Oh, so we're doing yeah. the end of a, a Grand Challenge live, guys. Thank you for joining me. That was kind of a, an abrupt start to the video. But we're here joined by Colton, obviously the Compe of Complexity Pro. He's playing his favorite deck, and this deck is going around just everywhere right now. You guys have probably already seen it. It's probably been on other YouTube channels. I have not covered it yet. It's the Barbarian Hut Bandit Three Musketeer Flying Machine deck. Colton, why do you like this deck? Why is it so dominant, and why is it so annoying for me to face? <laughs> Uh, it's, I mean, it's really solid. It's relatively defensive, but still has a lot of pressure. Um, and then also, it's I, I, the sh the meta is starting to shift away from it, but like it's really good versus lightning decks uh, and like golem lightning. Uh, but yeah, ma mainly those reasons. And it doesn't have electro dragon in it. I guess people kind of get tired of using electro dragon, maybe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you see, you see more people trying to use decks that don't have it, and this is one of them. Yeah, can you talk a little bit about the Barbarian Hut's role in this deck? Like, for uh, you know, is it as, as simple as just stacking a bunch of Barbarian Huts until you overwhelm your opponent, or is it not played like that? Talk a little bit about Barbarian Hut. So Barb Hut mainly is just uses a defense that you want to constantly keep up that uh, like allows you to set up Musketeers eventually. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it doesn't really, you can't really stack it because this deck has a slow cycle, but uh, it, it does have a lot of defensive power and it just gives you the pressure to like have a really expensive deck that doesn't have pump and has three musketeers. I mean, it's like a pump substitute that also defends. I got you. Uh, basically. Okay. And, that and, and offers a lot of pressure. So speaking of pressure, get a lot going on here, but a fireball's going to take care of that. You do have that bandit, yeah. but you have I'll get bats. the bandit yep. dash, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah, how are you feeling about this match so far? Uh, decent. This should be okay. Yeah, and you have the bandit. I get a little bit of barb chip. Yeah, and you have the bandit in this deck too, which is it gives it maybe a little bit of an element of bridge spam with the bandit and the battle ram. There's just so many things going on in this deck. Yeah, I feel it's like, like right? a combination. It's, yeah, uh, and it's kind of got that like uh, OP Sam type deck to it as well, yes. with just the barb hut and three musketeers. Yeah. It's just one of the newest iterations of that, basically. I Everyone gotcha. loves that deck ever since he started using it in CRL. Absolutely. Is it, do you think that OP Sam was the most innovative pro uh, in NA, in your opinion? Or is, there, is he a guy that you look to and be like, wow, what is he playing now? In NA, absolutely, I yeah. think so. Uh, yeah, I mean, because really, if I mean, it was either his deck or like someone using his deck. So yeah, yeah. In, in terms of like these bar putt kind of spam ones that TSM in general like adopted, and I'm sure because of him. So yeah, I, I definitely think so. NNA at least. Yeah. I, I'd say the only person that could like compete with him is like Lupanji overall, but um, definitely NNA. Yeah, a lot going on it. over here on the left. But... Ah, no! Ooh, that Pekka. Oh, I'm gonna have to freaking bar barrel it. <laughs> well, you stop the Bandit charge and you distract the Pekka. So Bandit's gonna get a charge on that left tower, but you have the right tower down to 462. Kind of just the power of those steady flow of barbarians coming from. Yeah, that bar the hut. second bar putt's really nice. Yeah. Because uh, you no, know, I took a lot of damage. I should be able to get a bar pit here, and that'll be game. Yep. Oh, not quite. Well, Ooh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll cycle. Yeah. So now all you have to do is stop this ram. He's gonna really unload on you in the left lane and the Pekka. Just need a fireball to finish this, but the bandit does charge. Oh no. I should have. Oh no! Oh man, on the it was it was because I didn't hit the goblin game with the fireball. I needed to get that value, so I didn't have to defend the right side so hard. Oh man. Okay. Well, we're making it interesting here. <laughs> For sure. Okay. Let's go. Just hop in whenever you're ready. Uh, in the downs in the downtime here. How do you? What do you think of this? Oh wow, we're already in a match. Forget it. Yeah. Usually gonna... I don't get them this quick at nine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's go a clean three. You know here. <laughs> I believe. No pressure. So no do you pressure. start off with a barb hut in this deck? Yeah, you do typically. 
Okay. Um, just because, well, I'd say the only difference of it, it, cause you want to set it up and then have the tempo like of everything coming towards you, and then then you plop down your three musketeers, gotcha. or then you get like a flying machine from range that baits out a poison or something, so you can play three musketeers. Yeah, and I noticed um, that not just I don't have flying machine right here, so okay. I'll split. The but uh, yeah, not... then, see, that's kind of nice. Like you have stuff coming towards you, and you get value out of them. Yeah, and not just you, but I've noticed everybody playing this deck, everybody who's who's good playing this deck, they do not place the Barbarian Hut one tile ahead where you can pull a hog or a, a battle ram. Why is that? Is it just so you don't want to get sniped? Yeah, because there's too many like long range things and this deck doesn't really have great like Electro Dragon at the bridge counters. Mm -hmm. um, it's decent on like a de on defense versus Electro Drag, but you can't really stop it at the bridge. So that's when you kind of play it lower. Um, okay. I thought about it for a while and the only time where I start it early or higher is when like I know I need to defend the other side with it. Or when I don't have like any of my cheap cards in hand, so I know if I like I play it, I like literally can't play anything. Gotcha. So then I would play it higher just to be safe, uh, depending on your hand. But usually you want to play it like lower, just to keep it alive mainly. Because I mean, you want to keep it alive for as long as possible, keep the threat. Oof! Thought that, that bandit might get a charge yeah, off. I thought he would for a second too. So he's splitting his damage, which is fine. It and looks like so it... he's playing Pekka Miner. This one's a. I, I feel like this matchup's kind of hard, but. Definitely win it. It's a good fly machine for him. I don't have bats in cycle. Yeah That's the only thing about this deck too is like it, it takes a little bit getting used to not having those cheap cards You know you have bats and that's it really and obviously I yeah, guess right you have... here. It's, it's just gonna die. Yeah Then it's kind of nice. I guess yeah Bandit's it's so sneaky with those charges. I feel like she does that so often So it's gonna poison here, but you're able to yeah. avoid any serious damage. So now he's going to look to P.E.K.K.A. I'm just going to go ahead and take this fireball. Nice, nice. Go the now fire. he can't oh, P.E.K.K.A. Man, I wish he could have hit that. Yeah, he doesn't have the elixir doing now. Yeah, it's a decent tempo change for me. He's going to be slightly behind the elixir. Mm -hmm. Throw this down to keep up, like, distraction. Oh, that's actually kind of nice, because he's in the right lane, but then I still have a little bit of pressure there. And you do have your fly machine. Get bandit charge on that miner. Meanwhile, you're gonna go in pretty aggressively again to that E drag. Barbarian gets to the tower. Even if he stops this, I have a lot of pressure on the left side too. There you and, go. Oh, I got the connection. Yeah, there nice. you go. All right. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. And then a lot of the times, that's what will happen is you'll just you'll build up enough pressure. He loses. He gets a lower and lower and elixir, and then eventually you like overwhelm him. Sure. Yeah. And I notice a lot of players when I, when I see them playing this deck, and I even gave it a try in my last tournament. I know a lot of times that you'll get down in double, in single elixir and then you can make that comeback because it's so strong in double elixir. Do you agree with that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree. And it's like, it, I mean, it's similar to all three must decks where you're kind of building up enough pressure, but then it has, also has all these like bridge spam elements. So mm -hmm. that's that's really what it like amounts to is is building up a push in the back or having like a lot of counter pushing barbarians and then just spamming both sides and you end up overwhelming. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you bait out their spell or whatever and then you Yeah, you try to get that electric lead. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, so a lot of times you don't even have to bait the spell. We will come to you guys when we are inside the next match. Bob the turtle. Is this a uh... Okay, here we go. What? Bob the turtle. Is, uh-oh. Is that, is that the same as Bob the rock or no? It might be because it's Bag's clan. Trademark. I, I think it's like his uh I think it's like the feeder to grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> I know all this because I just had him on the channel. <laughs> nice. Right. Uh, I did not know that. Yeah. So it might be Bother Rock. He's really good. So, so. Bag is setting up an empire. Yeah, he is. Ah, uh, see, this is tough because I can't really. I was gonna say I couldn't really bat the other side. Ooh. Oh, Lumberjack does so much damage. I'll just have to try to counter push off of that because I had a really awkward hand for dealing with what he threw down. Yeah. This is an interesting deck that he's playing. I have what, not. What is? I yeah. can't say I've ever seen it. It's Ice Golem. Lumberjack, Lumberjack. I don't know. Mega okay. Minion. E Drag. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what this is. I wonder what his last two cards are. It's got to be like a control ish deck. Yeah. I guess it could be Golem, but. It's making me jealous of this mini Pekka. Emotes, though. I didn't get those ones, neither did you. <laughs> I don't like mini Pekka, so it's okay. He's serving you a lot of pancakes. All right, I wonder if that's why he's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe he knows. All right. So we'll see his spell. Okay, there it is. Yeah. 
That was good. Fireball log by him. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And that's a good fireball by you. So, now we know what he's playing at least. Yeah. Oh man, I'm such a de damage deficit. Yeah. I didn't uh, I didn't think he'd have fireball with like tombstone in the cards he had. Yeah, it's kind of weird. The one thing that he is lacking is splash damage aside from fireball and e-drag. He doesn't really have anything. Yeah. But... That's a weird tombstone. Yeah, I was going to say, I wonder why he did that. Does he, is he playing yeah. you for graveyard or something? I have, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he saw three musts, though. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Mm. So this is kind of a weird situation because there's no like obvious play, so you're just cycling, trying to get a fireball yeah, out of Yeah, I mean, I thought about playing Battle Ram, but he has barbs. I mean, yeah. uh, like Lumberjack and stuff, so I didn't so really think that was a great idea. Yeah. This is going to be good 3-must value, though. Yeah, because he has fireball out of hand. So now I'll just look to counter push really hard. Mm -hmm. He's going to E-Track, so you're going to go... Okay. Okay, all right, Hard Barrel coming down there. He has Fireball in hand. He's not, he doesn't have enough Elixir to use it, though. Bats make contact, eating up a little bit of rage, getting a lot of damage on that left tower, so things are pretty much even here. Elixir-wise, you might even have a little edge. Yeah, it was just awkward there, because I thought he was going to go for the Royal Hogs. There they are. It does. It's actually not bad for you. In a, right. in a situation like uh, like you were in before with an Elixir Advantage, sometimes what I don't know about this deck is when it's a good time to hut up. Ooh. When it's a good time to hut up versus playing like three muskies and going all in, you know? I'd say three muskies when they don't have like their fireball in hand is probably ideal, especially in double Elixir. And single Elixir, you may want to get a second hut up. Okay. But otherwise, I think it's ideal to get three musk down if they're big spells out of hand. Flying Machine value! Oh yeah, I really thought I was gonna die to Mega there. <laughs> yeah, barbs, right. He just evaded everything. A couple barb hits on that right tower. You got two. I'm minutes. gonna try to get back to the battle ram because he just wasted his uh. His... Yeah, but it's so annoying to get through uh, get through. E drag. E drag. He's using a lot of elixir on the left on the left, but he still has fireball in hand. So you're kind of. Yeah, I can't really. I can't three mouse because yeah. he has fireball. Three musks there. I just had to because I didn't have another defensive option. Yep. That's okay because he's, he's kind of so splitting, splitting damage a little bit. Yeah. That'll just have another bar put. This may end up being a draw. I was just going to say that. This could be a draw. He's playing it very well, though. He's not like being super aggressive. He's picking and choosing his spot. So are you. So, not a bad stop there for you. Raged up uh, pigs. But he doesn't get Whoops. any value. That was a nice fireball. I meant to play Bandit right there, not <laughs> bar, bar Barrel. Oh, I expected E Drag. There it is. It's gonna get Mega Minion swing on the right, but at this point, I feel like you can only tire potentially. Yeah, I think you'd have to like misplay pretty hard for me to win. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool match to watch, though. You can see when he misses oh. one of those muskies. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So this could be a, an opportunity for you. He has Lumberjack in cycle. He has E-Drag. Hitting him in the right lane. He uses Lumberjack in the right lane. Oh, just... Oh. You get the charge off. Yeah, but I also took Lumberjack yeah. damage. <laughs> he could Royal Hog Fireball you here, but you have, what, Hut in cycle, right? Yeah. Flying machine, maybe could sneak in. Yeah, it's gonna be GG. That was a really nice. Match. <laughs> what? Two, one. Oh, no! yes! oh man! <laughs> Dude, he missed the flying machine. <laughs> oh man, that was epic. <laughs> All right. My fire wasn't gonna make it in time either. G G man, that was crazy. I thought it was gonna be a draw, even at the very end, even after he missed it. All right, so now we are we are in uh, to the very end of this challenge. That was eleven, right? 
Yeah. Oh, that's uh, that. That is the eleventh one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we'll be right back with you guys when we find match number twelve. All right, guys. We are in the twelfth match here against a guy from Dopamine. All right. It's do or die. We don't have the Barb Hut. No. <laughs> so what do you do uh, if you don't I'm, have Barb? I'm just gonna cycle Bandit. I think. Okay. I know some people will cycle Bandit the bridge. Some people will cycle Bandit behind King Tower. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Oh boy, he's going in heavy. Bar barrel gonna come in huge. Flying machine helping out. Bar barrel clutch. Uh -oh. I think it's a mirror match. It's mirror match. And he has the early, early edge here. Jeez, man, he's just spamming. Yeah. That is that out of tower range? Uh, I think it inched forward a little bit, so I don't know if it was or not. Yeah. I think it was the right call. I did not have the right like hand to deal with that. Yeah, so it's start. definitely a mirror matchup. I saw some guy, by the way, I was telling you off uh, air. I think his name is Hello World, I believe. I don't even know who yeah, it is. Yeah, I've seen him high in GCs. I played that. My finger slipped when I played the bar. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't mean to play it one higher. But yeah, he got 20 Grand Challenge wins in the last seven days using the deck that, that Colton is running, guys. So yeah, whoever you are, Hello World, uh, you're welcome on the channel if you want. <laughs> so here we go. So definitely not the start that you want necessarily. How do you navigate this uh, this mirror matchup? Uh, well, I actually did that on purpose. I oh. wanted him to fireball when barbs weren't coming out, okay. so and, and not on my tower. So I think that's okay. It gives me an opportunity to split three musk. Yep. And now, and then now when I fireball, it'll be on his three musk and his hut. Yep. So that's definitely. So I think that was good for me. I, I, I like so. doing that anyway. Now obviously. Situations like this, and we saw a situation on one of the last matches too. It would have been really advantageous to have log instead of barbarrel. Do you think that's a viable sub, or do you like barbarrel? I would say it's a viable sub. Also, some people use ghost instead of bandit, so those are the kind gotcha. of the subs you can make. No, I played it one too low, or maybe a little bit early. If you don't take the charge, and your bandit will yeah, get a little bit of value. It's not that big. It's an even trade still. Yeah. Just could have got a little bit more HP. Get one more whack on that barb, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So you do do you do the same thing with a flying machine or? Okay. So get I thought about it, out. but yeah. I mean, he'll we'll both take the same fireball here. It is kind of nice for him that he gets to uh, have his must come out a little bit later, but I just didn't really have any other plays that I like. Yeah. So he's going heavy in the right lane here. You have Bar Barrel in the cycle. That's going to take that Bandit back over the bridge. Not too bad. He opts to for the late Fireball there. You take a Bandit charge onto the Barb Hut, but you do get Barbarians and the Musketeer locked onto that left tower temporarily, so slight damage advantage. And you had to use Fireball on defense, so that was really nice for me. Absolutely. So now it's a... Do you pressure... Do you go all in on the right lane if he plays like a... Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's low on Elixir now. He's Bandit. Get a charge. Oh, I didn't get the charge. Nice battle ram by him. Kind of a panic, but good move. The barbarian barrel back in hand for the left lane. But you do have a, a, a nice damage advantage. Unfortunately, take a swing from that. So interesting. <laughs> so interesting seeing the mirror matchup. Just to, you yeah, know. it's so it's so weird. I've had to play it a couple a few times in this GC, and I've yeah. won them. But okay. What do you think the key is? Just uh, fireball not value? Fireballing, not oh! fireballing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually you want to take your fireball. Usually, it's, hut, a, new, it's like. a new strategy. Missing the flying machine <laughs> is a new strat that my opponent has thought up. And that let's is see, a let's see if it works out for him. Swing in this game for for you. And you take one of those musketeers out as well. Applying a ton of pressure here in the left lane, knowing that again that fireball is out of cycle for the opponent. And you have the you have the damage advantage and the. I'm gonna hope he's not fast right here. Split, split, split. Nice. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just That's okay. The last second, but you could afford that too. I think I'll sneak in a fly machine. Oh yeah. Go. Yeah. Wow. I mean, so even if so, even though the fireball hits all three. He, uh, they still killed, like, things before they died. Exactly. Got the flying so machine. So that, that's why I went out. for it. And then I was hoping he was slow. He wasn't, but then I still got the flying machine out. Once but now he's going to go all in here on the right, like... Yeah, I'm just going to fireball cycle. I think even... Yeah, he couldn't even go out because the barbs are pressuring. That's why I'd, I thought, like, a fireball cycle was pretty safe right there. Yep. And then I'll get the fireball out to win it. There it is. I missed. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, right? <laughs> Man, that was, uh...
That was a very, very epic video, man. I'm so happy that you won it. At, when, whenever you. you come in, whenever anybody comes in at 9-1, I'm like, oh boy. And then they lost their first match. I'm like, oh no, this could be a very short video. But dude, clutch. yeah, very clutch, man. Well, yeah. congratulations on the win. Thanks for uh, spotlighting the deck. I thought you did a really good job explaining it. And uh, best of luck for CRL next season. Are you excited for uh, for 2019? Yeah, I'm excited for 2019, and then I'm excited to finally uh, get a good internet connection soon, like next week, and then start streaming uh, between good. the holidays. Awesome, man. Are you going to be uploading to YouTube anytime soon? I noticed that you're kind of in a drought there, too. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, part of it was CRL, and then I just wanted to have, like, a vacation after that, and then um, I've tried to stream a little bit, but I've had connection issues, but uh, we're getting, getting a new internet connection because I'm moving to our complexity apartments okay. uh, that are reasonably close to me. Awesome. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to be trying to get YouTube videos up. I'm probably going to do a little bit more of, like, I'm going to try to stream, like, three, four hours a day and then try to turn some of that into YouTube content and then spending more time, like, the time that isn't spent on streams that will be turned into YouTube videos, I'll try to make the most... People really like the, like, informative content I make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I try to, I'm going to try to do that a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. I'll be looking forward to that, man. And to all my viewers, uh, guys, if you haven't checked out Colton's YouTube channel, certainly check it out. It's different than any other like pro YouTube channel where you do like, correct me if I'm wrong, but you do a lot more long format, really in-depth strategy that I think a lot of you guys will, will benefit from. Yeah, when uh, when I'm actually putting the time in to make the videos, like the Elixir Counting video yes, and then yes. um, stuff, stuff like that has been like the most, it is the most successful because it's more of like, it's not OJ type videos, no. but it's, it's it's like a cross between that and like a pro player giving the information, I guess. Yeah, it's more like so. you can almost listen to a lot of your stuff as a podcast too, kind of, you know? True, like, true. So, and I like the I like when you bring other pros on, like you did one with Razer and Adrian Piedra too. So, anyway, keep up the good work, man, and uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me on. I'm happy to come back whenever, and uh, yeah, have a good day, everybody. All right, happy to have you, Colton. Make sure you guys check out Colton's player stats, so thanks to StatsRail.com in the description below, along with his Twitter and his YouTube channel. All the relevant links will be there in the show notes. And, uh, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Huge shout-out to Colton again and to Brent Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information in the description below. Thank you so much for watching all the way till the end. And, as always, take care, guys.